Hi, I'm Dr. Kristen Chernohoy from the University of Wisconsin River Falls. I'd like to welcome you to our coffee concert series and to our guests today, two amazing and talented and personality filled pianists, both hailing from the area of Russia and that, that region. We have Stella Bonsberg Sick and Ivan Konev. Ivan Konev is a faculty member here at the University of Wisconsin River Falls. And with him is a his partner is from Hamlin University. Welcome to UW River Falls. Thank you. You guys are just hot on these keys. And it's been just a treat to watch you record. So let's talk about our compositions today, Brahms and Tchaikovsky. Ivan. Well, uh, we uh, started playing Brahms uh, way before we started playing Tchaikovsky. Actually, Brahms, uh, we, were, we were going to premiere it or play it at, at the um, piano festival, which were supposed to happen in Mar back in March. And it's, of course, uh, because of the pandemic, everything had got postponed. Um, so I thought it was a good idea to uh, resurrect that idea of playing Brahms together, and we rehearsed that. So we liked both the, liked the piece. And then we started thinking of what we want to add to this. And uh, naturally, because of the season, because of uh, you know uh, end of the year, so we decided that Nutcracker would, would be a great piece right around this this time of the year. And um, uh, and uh, it's actually quite an interesting combination because, <laughs> ironically, Brahms and Tchaikovsky weren't really on a good terms uh, as, as as composers. So uh, they they they, yeah, they made silly comments about each other. I think at some point though they uh, they. Um, they get together, and I think I read it somewhere that they even had a drink, and then they, it, it kind of well, went well. And uh, um, so we, we wanted to offer some kind of, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, reconciliation. Reconciliation. I like that. Right. <laughs> I like that. Right. Uh, so, and you'll hear that even uh, the funny part is that the Brahms, which is in B flat major, uh, written the same key as, a, as the beginning of the Nutcracker suite. So it, it kind of runs very smoothly from one, one piece to the next piece. Mm -hmm. uh, wanted to add to that that I um, also for, for, for a number of years uh, I've been playing I've been asked to play keyboard part in Nutcracker for the bigger orchestra at the Hennepin uh, um, Hennepin Theater uh, or, or Minnesota Theater I think it's called it's on Hennepin Avenue and for the big uh, large productor for of, of production of Nutcracker with with ballet dancers and, and all that and I kind of with this year obviously we did not do that and I, I that's a part that I thought I was missing from my life because I get used, so I'll get used to playing that every year and uh, and uh, you know there were certain voids that needed to be filled and uh, that's how we came up with this idea. That's actually a, a, a very good way to put it because the Nutcracker is performed countless places, every valley co company um, in the Twin Cities. We bring people in, we have our own homegrown, and it is a tradition. And when I think of all those dance schools that train their kids to be a part of that, they really had to do something else unique. And I have been seeing some of my friends who they've got virtual dance recitals and the ballerinas are dancing in the living room and they're videoing this. And we all have a void with live music. And, and even as performers, or maybe especially as performers, there has not been an outlet so tell us about um, your practice schedule and how you, so you've got the programming, we've got the, the reconciliation between Brahms and Tchaikovsky. When I think of both of them, I think of them as two of my favorite composers that represent the Romantic era. Right. So maybe that's where the competition came in. Yes, in a way it was. Uh, Brahms represents a very traditional German school of composition. It's very logical, it's very structured, whereas Tchaikovsky's music is, as some uh, critics say, cart on the sleeve kind of composer. Everything is about emotion, uh, beautiful melodies, maybe structurally not as sound as Brahms's music is. Um, so it, it's truly two different sides of the same coin. And they've both stolen our hearts. Absolutely. And, you know, um, I love playing both of them. I like listening to both of them, but they invoke different sides of me. And I imagine it does the same for the audiences when they listen to Brahms, which is, you know, a little bit more, I don't know, meaty, if you will. And Tchaikovsky is like uh, bubbling, fizzy champagne kind of music. 
That's a red. That's a, so. So we've got we've got some Chardonnay and we <laughs> or, 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 or or Marlot maybe. Right, but exactly Marlot and champagne and then champagne. Yes. Yeah, very funny. That's wonderful. And so when you talk about these two composers and you talk about your program and how it contrasts, you've already stated that maybe maybe you connect the most. Uh, depends on your mood, your time, your intellect. And, and that's, what, that's what we do with music. The music touches different parts of our souls at different times. But at this time of year, um, we do have that heaviness going on. Yeah. We do have lifestyle changes. We do have drama. We have a thickness. And we need that predictability in a way, in that form and that structure. And yet we also need to dance around, like I said, with those little ballerinas. I caught you trying to teach Yvonne to waltz a little bit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And do you do you dance a lot? Um, vicariously through my children. Beautiful. They are dancers, so I watch them, and I wish I was them. So. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. And so you were uh, you immig Speaking of your children, you have two two boys, Correct. and you immigrated to the United States from uh, the middle of Siberia to southern Florida. Yep. And then found your way up to um, well Eastman for school, and then to the University of Minnesota. Yes. And you actually are happy. In our cold climate. Deliriously happy. I know it sounds really strange for people who don't like the cold, but the change of season is so ingrained in my daily being that um, living in Florida was just not something that I could handle because it's, you know, uh, you know, rainy season and then the hot season. Sometimes it's all in the same. And uh, I love the change of seasons. I love the area of, of the country. I love the people. And so... It was a no-brainer for us to stay here after school. So. That's, that's really a beautiful thing to hear because there's a lot of people who do gravitate to the Midwest, and sometimes we ask ourselves on those chilly days, what are we doing? But there is a character of um, survival. There is a character of stick to that happens as a result of some of this. Mm -hmm. And um, if you don't mind having an entire closet full of coats, well, you know, there's that too. So we can survive in any weather. Uh, when I, we, have a pro, we had a program here at the university that, that had teaching in Scotland. And they used to say, there's never bad weather. There's only poor dressing. So that's kind of how we live up here. Mm -hmm. And Yvonne, you came also from uh, the, well, you went to the University of Moscow and then came over here for graduate work too. So your commonality is Alex Brzezinski. So tell us a little bit about that. Oh yeah, yeah. We, we we met through Alex. We studied together with the same professor, uh, Alex Brzezinski, uh, director of the um, artistic director of the piano piano e competition, okay. and a uh, great professor, great mentor, and mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's kind of like our circle. Um, mm -hmm. And um, uh, yeah, that's how we started. I think it's more than a circle. I think it's like a family. Family, you, yeah. You, right. you know, we have a group of people. Not all of them are Russians. There's mm -hmm. just a variety of different people who studied with the same teacher. And so we have like a secret language in a way because there's certain things that all of us went through, maybe at the same time, maybe not at the same time. But it really, I think, makes it so much fun to play together for people, you know, who studied with the same teacher because we, you know, we have a lot of commonalities and we understand <laughs> certain things in a very specific way. And, you know, it's, it's a family. Mm -hmm. So his words are echoing when you get to a certain rhythm, when you get to a certain style, or you're, working, you're playing with a certain composer. So you know the background. And, and in your ears, it's like, we shared this journey. Right. And so you hear your, your uh, colleague playing, like, yep, that sounds familiar. That's, 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 that's cool. Like, you can hear the, um, the under, undercurrents of, yeah. of, the, of the Russian school in all of our playing. Yeah. Absolutely, and yeah. I find it fascinating, and I find it just rich and filled with emotion. And uh, we are so blessed that Yvonne continues to bring beautiful people like you and many others to this campus. And I'm sorry that we didn't have that piano festival, but we will again. So we'll get you back here. And we have had Alex Brzezinski here on campus also a number of times. So that's been a treat for all of us to learn from this master who is so dedicated to excellence Absolutely. and filled with knowledge. I really appreciate you coming and sharing your talents today. Is there anything else that you'd like to share? No, well, we hope to come back again and do do the as much as we, we like to do what we're doing right now, virtual concerts. It's, I think it's great. Hopefully, one day we'll have we'll be back here and uh, this whole will be uh, will be.
will be filled with with real audience and um, and in the meantime keep performing keep yeah. practicing yes. and we'll keep learning and growing and enjoying all the fruits of your labor thank you so much thank you thank you